In the previous episode, I told you that the abandoned wreck in the backwaters of the Saginaw River was a side-wheel tug Caddy Reed. Now it's time to prove it. Of course, this isn't a court of law where we have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. This is the court of bones in the backwater where we only have to prove to the level of pretty dang sure. Unlike what you may think, the investigation of any shipwreck involves far more time spent in the library and on the internet than time spent on the wreck site itself. So my first step was to consult a reliable source, and that would be the vast database of shipwrecks compiled by Dave Swayze and found on BoatNerd.com. A search of this site using keywords burned and middle grounds yielded only two candidates. The LG Mason, official number US 15325 sidewheel tug, built in 1864 at Grand Rapids, Michigan. She was 122 feet by 17 feet by 5 feet, 69 tons gross weight. Lost on October 15, 1886, in the Saginaw River near the Lafayette Street Bridge. Noted, burned. The second candidate was the Katie Reed. Official number US 14255 Sidewheel Tug, built in 1867 at Dupree, Wisconsin. 101 feet by 25 feet by 10 feet, 103 tons. Lost on October 20th, 1873, in the Saginaw River at Salzburg. Noted, burned. Now it was back to the library and dig into some old newspapers for Bay City or maybe even Saginaw. First I found the L.G. Mason, which was reported to have burned in her slip at the Murphy and Dorr Mill just after midnight on the morning of Friday, October 2nd, 1886. Now it's time to run down the location of the Murphy and Dorr Mill. For that task, I went to the 1879 bird's eye view drawing of Bay City. If you think that these bird's eye view maps are just fanciful likenesses, think again. These maps were amazingly accurate when it came to buildings and homes and businesses. The reason for that accuracy was the people who drew the maps would then go back to the buildings, the homes, and the businesses and sell advanced copies of their map saying, your house is going to be right here. I'll be doing a short video on how they were made and how come they're so accurate. Watch for it. But for now, you'll just have to trust me. The Murphy and Dorr Mill was on the island of the Middle Grounds itself. Also, Murphy and Dorr had docks on both the east and west side of the Middle Grounds. And the records do not say which side of the island the wreck took place on. So it could be considered that the Mason's grave may actually be on the other side of the island. It is also denoted that she burned near the bridge. Local lore says that her remains can still be seen near the Lafayette Street Bridge in the West Channel. But the location of her dock on the West Channel puts the Mason a good half mile from where our wreck is located. That leaves the Caddy Reed, but we still have to prove her location. Once again, into the old newspapers. In this case, we have taken the Saginaw Courier from October 1873 and found the details there of the reeds burning. In that article are these key clues. The tug burned while at Stoddaker's dock and that dock is located on what is published as the Salzburg side of the channel. As seen in this 1916 geological survey map, Salzburg is a creek that is an arm of Dutch Creek, which drains directly into the West Channel. The two border a small community that was monikered after the creek.
Now that we know Stadiker is in this area, we need to locate his dock. For that, we go to the city directory of the era. And we find that there is a Stadiker in the salt business. Why is that important? Again, in looking at the 1867 bird's eye view, we see that they accurately depict locations of buildings such as churches, streetcar stations, and salt works, also known as brine wells. And here we see the area of the West Channel docks where our wreck was found. And there are two salt works. Personally, I'm certain that one, if not all, of these brine wells belonged to Mr. Stodiker. And of course, he would need a dock to ship from. And the Caddy Reed is right where Stodiker's dock is and right where his brine well was. Case closed. Now, how do we explain her present condition? Here's the sequence of events. Late in the evening of October 29, 1873, the tug Caddy Reed moors at Stodiker's dock. That night, her crew retires. Just before 3 a.m., while they're sleeping, a fire breaks out somewhere aboard the vessel. Shortly after 3 o'clock, her crew awakens to find their vessel is well involved in fire. The fire spreads so rapidly that some of the tug's crew are forced to jump into the shallow river to save their lives. There are no fire hydrants in the area, and soon the entire vessel is being swiftly consumed by the flames. Before long, the flames have burned the vessel down to the water, and at that point, the river begins to rapidly seep into the flaming hulk. All at once, the water is seeping becomes a flood. The remains of the boat, weighed down by her boiler, sinks to the shallow bottom, instantly extinguishing the fire. Only the metal pieces of the vessel, or engine, boilers, and paddle wheels, remain unconsumed by the fire. The wooden portion of the boat that was at or below the waterline remains intact but submerged. Later that year, the decision is made to salvage the remaining equipment for use in the tug A.H. Hunter. Keep in mind that this is 1873, and the boat's wooden remains have very little value. So, the methods for such a salvage would be crude, and the equipment used would be the least expensive that the salvager could find, so as to keep the cost of the operation to an absolute minimum. We're not sure if the engine of the reed went into the hunter, but it was removed. Each time that one of the pieces of the boat was removed, the surrounding hull would suffer some sort of damage. The most coveted item in the reed were the boilers. The huge iron boiler tanks weighed tons, and removing them with 1873 technology was not an easy matter. The massive boilers would have been dragged from the hull, destroying a large portion of the boat over which they were pulled, and shoving the stern section away from the boat's keel into the position where it rests today. Over the next 127 years, new layers of mud and silt have filled around the hull. Additionally, any eyewitnesses to the wreck would have died off, and her story would be forgotten. The lumber trade would die, and eventually so would the salt trade. The sawmills would vanish, and the brine wells would disappear as well. The caddy reed would be erased by the passing years. And so, we have the story of the abandoned mystery shipwreck and how it was researched. The Caddy Reed can now live again.